This is about the most difficult pulley problem we're going to do. If you can understand this one, there's nothing really that you can't do with a pulley. Okay, we've got two masses, a 5 kilogram and a 20 kilogram on two ramps. So I've got a ramp here at 10 degrees with a 5 kilogram and a ramp here at 30 degrees with a 20 kilogram. And our plan is the same as we always do. Draw a free body diagram for the 5 kilogram, find the equation in the x direction, which is the direction of acceleration, and in that equation is the answer. I'm going to draw a free body diagram for the 20, and I'm going to come up with its x equation, which is the direction of acceleration, and again, the answer is in that equation. So I've got the two equations that define the motion of these two things. I'm going to put them together and find out what is the acceleration of this system and what is the uh, tension in the rope. Okay, so I'm assuming you've looked at some of the other videos. Let's draw the free body diagram for the 5, the 20, come up with the equations and see where that leads us. So this is going to be a, a complicated free body diagram. First, we have to decide with any pulley problem, which way is this system going to go? Uh, if you predict wrong, you're going to get a negative answer and you basically have to start again. Because in your free body diagrams, the friction is going to change direction depending on which way you think it's going. So, I think it's going to go this way. It's going to accelerate that way. I predict that because the 20 kilograms has got more gravity on it than the 5, and more of it is in the down direction, it's on a steeper slope. So I kept it simple enough that you could figure that out. All right, we'll draw the, the free body diagram for the 5 kilograms. Since it's on a slope, I draw the slope and I'm going to make that my x direction. And I'm going to draw all the forces on it. Is there gravity? Yes, there's gravity. Is it sitting on a surface? Yes, it's sitting on the surface. So there's Fn. Uh, is something pulling on it? Yep, there's a force here pulling on it. Ft. That's the force in the rope pulling on it. And is there friction? Yes, there's friction. And since it's moving up this way, the friction would be this way. So we got a little bit of friction that way. So I have those four forces on it. We never deal with forces at angles. Because now I tip my head. This is my x direction. This is my y direction. This is at an angle to my x and y axis. So I'm going to split that up into components. So I draw a triangle. Draw my two components. My gravity starts here, ends there, so it's down and to the left. And this is FGY and FGX. Which way is it accelerating? It's accelerating to the right. So for this diagram, this way is positive. So the forces that are important, what are they? FT is pulling the locks that way. FGX is trying to hold it back. And force of friction is trying to hold it back. So I've got this forward and these two backwards. I probably should have drawn this bigger so it looks like there's more force that way. Okay, so here's my free body diagram. This angle here is 10 degrees. Um, I can solve for the force of gravity. Force of gravity is mg, so 9.8 times 5 is uh, 49. Sorry, yeah, 49 newtons, so I know what that is. Okay, let's come up with the equation in the x direction. Well, for the x direction, we can say the force forward is Ft, that's that way. The force backwards are Fgx and force of friction. Those are the only two backwards. Fn is perpendicular, it doesn't matter. So this equals ma. So this is the equation that defines the motion of that free body diagram. Okay? Well, let's put the numbers in, get those out of the way for this one, and then we'll have only two unknowns, the acceleration and the tension. So I'll we'll move it here, so Ft minus, what's Fgx? Well, Fg is 49, Fgx is 49 sine 10 degrees. 49 sine 10 degrees. Minus force of friction, how do you calculate force of friction? It's mu Fn, and I should have told you mu is 0 0.1 for both surfaces, okay? And that equals Ma, which in this case is 5A. So now I just got to fill in what I know here. 49 uh, sine 10 is negative 8.5, so Ft minus 8.5, 49 sine 10, 
minus what was mu? 0 0.1. And how am I going to get Fn? Fn is in the y direction. And if I look at the y direction, it's not accelerating in the y direction. So in the y direction should be 0. This and this must be the same. Fn is equal to Fgy because it's accelerating this way. There's no acceleration in that direction, and those are the only two forces. So I'm going to substitute for Fn, I'm going to substitute Fgy. And what is Fgy? Fgy is 49 cosine 10 degrees. Because this is 49, this is the, uh, the adjacent side, 49 cos 10. So I'm going to put in here for Fn, 49 cosine 10 degrees equals 5a. So I work this all out. Ft, negative 8.5 minus 0.1 times 49 cos 10 is going to be 13.3 uh, equals 5a. I did this and skipped a line because you can see I'm running out of room. So I got this. This is the important equation. It explains what's happening to this box. Ft minus 13.3 equals 5a. Let's do the same for this box, and then we'll put it all together. All right, I need a free body diagram of the 20. So I'm going to draw the surface like that. Make my y-axis. This is my x-axis. This is my y-axis. And forget this diagram. I'm just drawing this. Is there gravity? Here's gravity on. Is it sitting on a surface? Yes, it is. Is there something pulling on it? Yep, there's a rope. And then there's a rope, there's tension. There's tension that way. Is there friction? The 20 kilogram box is sliding this way. So friction would be the opposite. It's in the same direction as Ft. So I got these two forces here. I tried not to overlap them. You can see, I don't know whether Ft is bigger than force of friction or force of friction bigger than Ft, but I'm just going to draw them both there. Okay, is it accelerating? It's accelerating that way. So for this box, positive is that way. Okay? As long as we choose the direction of acceleration as positive, both these formulas will agree with each other. Okay, same situation as the last one. Um, since it's accelerating this way, I only need components in this direction and this direction. I've got to break up Fg. So I'm going to break up Fg like this. It's a little bit in the y, Fg y, and a little bit in the x. Fg x. Starts here, ends there, so it's down and to the right. Okay, so what are the important forces? In this direction, I've got Fg x. That's causing the box to go down the hill. And holding it back, I've got Ft and force of friction. So let me come up with the equation for that. The equation is Fgx forward minus force of friction, which is negative because that way is positive, so it's negative, minus Ft equals Ma. There's the equation that defines that. Let's put in some numbers. Fgx. Well, what is Fg? This mass is 20, so this is 196, because it's Fg is mg, 20 times 9.8 is 196. So it's 196, and then, so I got Fgx is 196. This angle here is 30, because the angle of the ramp is the inside angle to the y direction of Fg. So this angle and this angle are the same. So I want FGX. It's going to be 196 times the sine of 30. Minus force of friction, which is mu Fn, minus Ft equals, and I've got 20A. So 196 sine 30 is 98. Mu is 0.1. And Fn, I can do the same thing I did with the other one. In the y direction, there's only two forces, Fgy and Fn. Since it's not accelerating in the y direction, then these two must be equal. So Fn is equal to Fgy. What is Fgy? Fgy is 196, and this is the adjacent side, so it's cosine 30. 196 
cosine third. Fgy equals 17.3. Oop, should have put 30 there. So I know Fgy. So it's 17.3 because Fn, therefore Fn equals 17.3. Sorry, 173. Screw it up. Sorry, it's, I was looking at the wrong number. 196 cos 30 is 173. Fn is 173. So this should be 173. Sorry about that. Minus Ft equals 20a. Okay, so I got 98. I got a number here, 0.1 times 173 is 17.3, minus Ft equals 28. So I end up with a single number, and it's 80.7 minus Ft equals 20a. There's the equation that governs that one. So when you take the 198 and subtract all this, you're going to get 80.7. Okay. So I've got the equation for this one. I've got the equation for this one. I need to now put them together. So I bring this over here, and I rearrange negative 13.3 plus Ft equals 5a. And just like in every example of this, when you have the one equation and the other equation, if you add the two equations up, the Fts will drop out. So you get 80.7 minus 13.3, 67.4, negative Ft, positive Ft is 0 equals 20 plus 5 is 25a. a equals 67.4 divided by 25. a is equal to uh, 26 point something. I'm going to round it off. Sorry, 2.6 something, 6.9 or something. So I'm going to round it off to 2.7 meters per second squared. And i got to give a direction. And the direction is, however your teacher asks you to describe it, for my class, it's going this way and that way. It's kind of a clockwise. So I'm going to say it's kind of like that. Okay? So that's the expectation I have, is you'll do it like that. Now the question was, what is the acceleration of the system? We found that. What is the um, tension in the rope? Well, once we've got this, we're okay. We just sub it into one of these equations. We could sub it into um, this equation here. We could say Ft minus 13.3 equals 5a. Ft minus 13.3 equals 5 times 2.7. Ft equals, in the end, it equals um, 26.8 newtons, which is roughly 27 newtons. As was mentioned in the other videos, you don't need to give a direction because it's tension. It's in two directions. It's a pull in the rope. Okay? That is about the most difficult uh, question you could possibly do. So if you understand this one, you are in excellent shape, my friend. Okay?